A parish priest has uh, kind of brought attention on himself because, and I'll pause here, when I heard this story I thought maybe this guy is like another version of me because it's not the first part of the story, I think he went a little bit too method. It's the second part of the story where I thought that is A, the sort of thing that I would d d declare and do, and B, that's the sort of response that I'd want. So this is this an alternate universe where you actually believed in God? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, that a parish priest in North Wales decided to test how Christian his parish parishioners were and disguised himself as a vagrant drunk, which is how they described him on the radio, and then they said he... Uh, he, he poured alcohol all over himself, wore all like really filthy cut clothes, and then they said, rolled around in dog's mud. <laughs> <laughs> now that's the method part. And also I thought, oh, I haven't heard the phrase dog's muck used in a long time. That's the sort of thing where maybe, maybe you've uh, gone round to see a posh relative. Yeah. Oh, you, you, you've, you've, you've brought, you've, you've brought you, oh, someone's uh, stepped in some dog's muck. Or brought some dog's muck into the, the house. house. <laughs> that's <laughs> how we've all been there. What, what, on their shoe or on a carrier bag? <laughs> Anyway, um, so so he rolled round in uh, in fecal matter. If we're, if we're staying at the posh end of town, uh, and so he made himself look like a tramp, and sort of turned up with a bottle of booze when he should have been uh, like preaching. Pre preaching, and thought he'd see just how charitable and Samaritan like his parishioners were, and of course they all shooed him away. And at this is the point. He then said he then ripped off of his disguise, his right off his dog shit. Dun, 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 and declared, it is I! And then on the report, they, they said, uh, when he removed his disguise, the parishioners gave him a round of applause. Oh, well, <laughs> oh, well done, you've proved it's all to be hypocrites. <laughs> a scrap metal dealer stealing copper from a disused mill accidentally caused a huge electrical explosion, an inquest heard yesterday. Was he playing his Atari Lynx with his he back? He was not. <laughs> John Roberts suffered deep burns to his face, arms, hands and chest but managed to leave the mill, climb a high wall, and drive to his girlfriend's house several miles away. In your face, Grim Reaper. <laughs> 11,000 volts. Oh, I'm not, there. I'm not done with yet. Look at that. It is but a scratch. Um, his girlfriend said that Mr. Roberts arrived <laughs> screaming at her house <laughs> around five the whole way. Way. <laughs> And then she said... I could hear a strange screaming noise. <laughs> he screams, help me. <laughs> he came in and sat down. <laughs> oh, Lord, get us a real love. His breathing was not good. He was going into shock. He could barely speak. His t-shirt had been burnt off and his face was all blackened. <laughs> <laughs> his eyelashes and hair were all burnt off. Blind. <laughs> Once again, as well, evil James. But there you go. But now here comes a bit. The hearing in Leeds was told that Mr. Roberts... Known to many as Bod. He is now, because he was having all his hair burnt off. Here comes Bod. <laughs> one of the, one of the uh, few things which I, I'm, I brought to the, the table today yeah. is what sort of we were talking about last week. Yeah. And it was discussed on our Facebook group with people talking about sticker books. Oh, yeah. And um, I was just saying, the only sticker book I ever managed to complete was the WWF sticker book, <laughs> which is, um, it wasn't the World Wrestling Federation sticker book, it was the World Wide Drive oh, sticker book. Um, and I don't know how I managed to do it, because there was only one other boy in our school who was collecting who I could be swaps with. <laughs> sticker books felt so good when they were all full that, of yeah, stickers. Yeah, lovely. The, the pages didn't turn yeah, properly. Very nice, heavy. Nice, yeah, and the but both sides. Were, yeah. And but I did I did complete the uh, Mexico eighty six football yeah. one, but it was only because I stuck um, South Korean stickers on all the all the squares <laughs> at the end because I got so frustrated with it. <laughs> but yeah, we was talking. Um, there was just people talking on there about how like a, a silver badge sticker was worth two. Oh, players. at least at least. And there's two things I think I mentioned on the site of just, just that that schoolboy ritual. You'd have an elastic band with them, an absolute doorstop wedge of stickers, and your entire play playtime was spent. Leaning over some other kid's frail hands as he went through them, and he just went, got, 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 oh, got so many times, yeah. got so many times. That's the, the, the one. Oh, I need it. Oh, I need it. Oh, need Oh, yeah, but that, well, that's the UA for cup that's worth like six. six. Oh, <laughs> oh, and you have to do that thing where all of a sudden you become oddly retarded in the presence <laughs> of a Panini sticker. Oh, please, please, I'll do anything, I'll do anything. What have you got? 
<laughs> you sort of offer your frills. Go, 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 go. And then he's in the position of power. Yeah, wow. but it was, it was just like uh, an, an early introduction of capitalism. But you would go, yes. you would go to another kid who has something which he needed and swap something, and then it was like, okay, I can trade that in for two of those yeah, and, and now, move it over to here. There you go. Brilliant. And also, in many ways as well, you then have anarchy. When some kid who had completed his, would his throw album, all his stickers in would the air. stand like some kind of crazed millionaire, yeah, like Brewster, and uh, you know, I like to think that maybe one day Roman Abramovich would just go a bit nuts and do this yeah. and just go scramble <laughs> and launch them all. I've got all the money laughing in. in the face of Britain's litter laws yeah. and just kind of launch them into the air. At which point, a lot of very excited boys, and then sometimes you just get girls in on this, yeah. even though they wouldn't be collecting girls the stickers. Have, girls have got um, their boyfriend's football scarf tied around their wrists. <laughs> Me and my brother had the Action Man Jungle Attack um, audio adventure on cassette. It was, and it was so racist. Like, there's a bit where um, they're surrounded by natives and they'll go, oh, God, oh, God, oh, God, oh, God, oh, and there's jungle drums. And they go, good God, look at him, he looks just like a monkey. <laughs> it's like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> hey, do you want a hey, Jim, go over here. Mm. So it was that, we used to listen to that on like over and over and over again. <laughs> and um, Arnold Shifter. And the next thing you knew, we were all voting BMP. Yeah, Arnold Shifter and the rem- removal men, which is a game monkey themed. Because it was um, <laughs> the PG Chips. Yeah, it was the, the stories of the monkeys at the PG Chips. Out. So it was like a whole story about um, Arnold Shifter and the removal men, and oh. the, with some songs by them, no. all, all narrated by Bernard Cribbin. Oh, brilliant. And then it was um, all, one all about the guy, uh, the monkey who won the Tour de France. <laughs> 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 Speaking of which, James, yes. you just finished with the capital. Oh, no, no, no. We'll, come, we'll come back to that in a second, because yeah. I was going to say, meetings I would have loved to have been in. I, I like talking about things like this. At which point, in the, kind of like the early days, before kind of like the Saatchi brothers got involved in the 80s, when I'm sure advertising campaigns were a lot simpler and just featured people were holding things up and shouting about them, buy this! You know, at which point did someone go, now, I'll tell you what, guys, there's a lot of tea out there on the market. And we can say it's flavoursome, we can say it's nice. We can say it's nice to have with the uh, first thing in the morning, and nice to have at 11 o'clock. But I, I don't think people are going for that anymore. I'm just going to throw this one out there. <laughs> Let's get a bunch of apes. <laughs> <laughs> Dress them up as people, and have them involved in the following mishaps. Number one, <laughs> moving, moving, piano. moving piano about. Number two, James Bond. <laughs> <laughs> and number three... A bit of a, a romantic fricassee <laughs> between a monkey with some lipstick on <laughs> and another monkey who keeps sort of slapping his face uh, when the date goes wrong. Yeah. Oh, yeah. sir. <laughs> and then, you know, it works. It absolutely worked for yeah, years. And a hit single. <laughs> what would you need yeah. to say? But that's, so that, that's all good stuff. And before I go on to the other thing that, I do, that you uh, just raised there, the other point is I said that a lot of this stuff has gone because of by absolutely mental mum. <laughs> She's done two things to me in my life that have caused absolutely deep mental scarring in terms of being a geek and a, a completionist and things such as that. One of them was that um, uh, I was really trying to, as you do when you're a teenager, I thought, right, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make myself as hard as bloody nails and I'm gonna start doing karate twice a week. Now, the thought of me doing karate twice a week is funny at the best of times. You know, I still have baby soft hands, quite frankly. The notion of me smacking through a plank of woods or get somebody else but to do it. He does still often show how high he can do a kick to me. This, this is like, and then do, a really, then do a really mean face <laughs> after he's done it. <laughs> and then, then he like whip around really fast. <laughs> I think that's right, yeah. Gotcha. I just did a really high kick. <laughs> Stunned. <Yeah. laughs> block. I used to say that. We'll block that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I was doing all that, and of course, as you do, uh, my parents quite fairly, and I've, I've got to say this to them, said, well, if you want to do this, you're going to have to pay for this yourself. That's, of course, work shy, as I still am to this day, the notion of getting up at six in the morning to do a paper round, pff, that's for the birds, there's no way I'm getting out of bed at six in the morning for anybody. And then when I came home from university one time, I thought I'd just have a quick look upstairs in the loft, like the sticker albums, and like, oh, he's really, well, he's done all this rubbish, we're we'll sitting upstairs taking up a lot of room, oh, oh, some bloody Aladdin's cave up there, oh, you know, there goes my childhood. The thing is, though, my brother has kept all of us. Oh, he seems uh, so lucky. Yeah, well, yeah, but it's a fire hazard, isn't it? it it's just got so much, you've got so much in that loft, Adam. I know you're listening, you're probably <laughs> the, one of the three people, people that are listening. listening. Yeah. Yeah. Clear that loft out, yes. I don't care that you're, you're now a two times father, clear out that bloody loft. Bye. See you soon. <laughs>
Creeping with Armstrong. Run for your lives. <laughs>